Ms. Sprague, are you ready? It's ready, Judge. Okay. This court will call cause number 2021 DCM 5120. We are here today, February 16th, 2022. It's 1140 in the morning. I am Judge Phyllis Martinez Gonzalez. I am the presiding Title 40 judge for Court 44 here in El Paso County. The pleading that is before this court is a petition to establish the parent-child relationship with one child. May I have announcements, please? Jessica Sprague for the state of Texas. Take ready to proceed. Thank you. <coughs> Let the record reflect that Mr. Guadalupe Sanchez is present. He is representing himself in this legal action. And we also have Ms. Deborah Harris. She too is present and representing herself as well. Ms. Harris, are you ready to proceed today, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, I am. And Mr. Sanchez, are you ready to proceed today, sir? Yes, I am. Okay. Both of you, please raise your right hand. You okay. swear or affirm the testimony you provide this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. I do. Thank you. Now, Ms. Harris, for the record, um, we do know that Mr. Guadalupe Sanchez is not appearing by us um, in front of us um, with the video. Yes. Can you identify the person who is on the other, um, who's online, who's representing themselves by telephone? Um, it did appear to be uh, Mr. Sanchez when he did have a video. Okay. And, and to be clear, we had some, um, some technical difficulties. We saw him by video. We're not able to connect. So he is appearing before telephonically. That's your understanding? Okay. Yes, it is. All right. So, Ms. Bray, go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Um, the state would first ask the court take judicial notice of the DNA results, which have been e-filed in this case, which cannot exclude Guadalupe Sanchez as the father of Derek Alexander Harris. This court will take judicial notice of all documents within the court's file, specifically the evaluation that was filed on or about February 10th of 2022. It is the DNA test report. It does certify that the alleged father who is Guadalupe Sanchez cannot be excluded as the biological father of the tested child, which is Derek Harris. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Judge. The parties have conferred and have a partial agreement for the court. Okay. That Miss uh, Deborah Harris will be appointed a sole managing conservator of the child. There will be no geographic restriction. Guadalupe Sanchez will be appointed a possessory conservator and shall have visitation only on the fourth weekend of every month, beginning at 6 p.m. on Fridays, ending at 6 p.m. the following Sunday, unsupervised. The remaining issues for the court's determination today are the name change of the child, uh, the child support amount, current medical support, dental support, as well as retroactive child support. State calls uh, Deborah Harris. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Ms. Harris, did you hear the partial agreement that I Yes, ma'am, I did. Are those portions I told the court we agreed to, are those your agreements? Yes, that was. You want the court to approve those agreements? Yes, I do. Now, how old is Derek? He is 16, almost 17. He'll be 17 in March. Okay. And he's not there in the room with you right now, is he? No, he is not. He is in the home, but he's not in the room. And has he always gone by the last name Harris? Always. Are you asking that the court keep his last name as Harris today? Yes, I am. You believe that would be in Derek's best interest? Uh, it will definitely be in Derek's best interest. Okay. Derek's now, already he, been in therapy. I'm sorry. Derek's been in therapy already. And he has um, talked to his therapist about this. And that's why I had mentioned earlier that. Okay. Had, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, and you'll have an opportunity to tell the judge. Anything extra you want, um, but we, we don't at this time want you to tell us what he told somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Um, now, you have health insurance available through your employer. Is that right? That is correct. And you were kind enough to give me the figures already. The cost for just Derek would be 
$23.50 per month. Is that right? That, that is correct. And for dental, it would be $13.95? That's correct. And you want to continue to provide these, this health and this dental insurance through your employer? Yes, I do. <clears throat> and you understand based on calculations that we've done, um, the amount that we can order Mr. Sanchez to pay would be less than those, those amounts that you're currently paying. Correct. But my understanding was Mr. Sanchez does not. Hold have on just a moment. You oh. need to let me finish ask, asking the question. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. So even though the amounts that you're paying are more than what he could be ordered to pay, you're asking the court to deviate in order for him to be ordered to pay what you're paying. Is that right? Correct. Now, do you know what type of work Mr. Sanchez does? No, I do not. Have you had any communication with him in the past 16 years? No, I have not. <clears throat> now, when's the last time you and Mr. Sanchez were together? In a I was, okay, um, I want to say I was about um, six months pregnant, seven months pregnant when he left. And at the time you were pregnant with Derek? Yes, ma'am. Um, did he know he was the father of Derek? Yes, he did. Did you tell Mr. Sanchez at any time that Derek had been born? No, I did not. I haven't had. No. Did you have contact information for him? No, I did not. Um, you had contact with his family at some point, though, after mm -hmm. Derek? Yes, I did. With his, um, his mother worked at the same place I did. Or I ran into her. So you you could have reached out to him. Well, I, yeah, she worked there. She started working there after Derek was born. Derek was um, almost um, probably about eight nine months when she started working there, and that's when she asked me. And are you requesting retroactive child support or back pay from Mr. Sanchez today? Yes, ma'am, I am. And. How many years of retroactive child support are you requesting the court order he pay? I was requesting 16. From the time Derek was born? Yes, ma'am. Did you make any attempts in the past 16 years to reach out to Mr. Sanchez about um, his obligations? No, I did not have any contact with him. Did he reach out to you at any time? No, he did not. Do you believe that he knew about Derek? Yes, I do. Um, and what makes you think he, he did or reasonably should have known about Derek? Okay. Um, I know we ran into each other at a Walmart um, and he did see me with Derek at that time. Derek was probably about, I want to say about six, seven months old. And then afterwards, when his mother started working at the same place where I was, um, his mother did approach me and asked if she can meet Derek. Um, and so they started coming over to meet Derek and, um, and that's, and she told me that, um, that she had told him, but again, that's hearsay, but that was my understanding from that point is that he didn't know, um, about Derek already. Did you receive any direct payments at any time in any way, shape or form from Mr. Sanchez for Derek? I've never received anything. And after the court makes her ruling today, I'm going to have to draw up an order. Are you okay if I submit that order directly to the judge or do you want to see it and sign off on it first? Um, I mean, that's, I mean, yes, you can, you can uh, send it to the judge. Is there anything else that you want to make sure that the judge knows before she um, makes a ruling today? I mean, my concern is that um, Derek's mental um, stability with doing so many change to do this change for him already, um, especially the name change. Um, I know he has been adamant in, in saying that he, um, once I started, we started this process, that was one of the questions that um, I've been open with him. And I did discuss this with him and he was adamant that he 
did not want the name change. And like I said, um, having the absence of it, um, like I said, Derek is in therapy. And so that is something that him and I have discussed and him letting me know that this would, I guess, further his situation with it. Um, he is, um, he was the one that made the initial contact to try and reach out to, to Mr. Sanchez um, because he was unable to. And when he finally did reach out, um, he ha he's had about four conversations with him. Mr. Sanchez had told him he would meet with him, but then never did follow through. So that's just added more stress on him, knowing that him, a 16 year old boy is the one reaching out to try and meet his father and he has not followed through with it. And so it has just brought on more anxiety. So my son is um, diagnosed with anxiety. He is diagnosed with depression. Um, and so those are already some issues that, that we go through um, on a daily basis and we work through. And so I just don't want to, um, to add any more stress to him or anxiety towards him, you know, at, at this time, it's just, um, he's already feeling anxious knowing that we put in a, a visitation because I guess, since he didn't follow through with meeting him, um, or stop reaching out to him. Now he's feeling that anxiety if, that we put in that he's going to be spending the night. Um, but you believe that this visitation would be as his mother, you believe that this visitation would be in his best interest. I honestly don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, I know this was something Derek's been wanting, you know, for a long time, but now that he actually spoke to him those few times and then that Mr. Sanchez broke all contact with him again, you know, at that point, um, it has kind of sent him back. And so now that I, my understanding was when I spoke to Ms. Lara's that I had to put something down. So I didn't know, like I said, I hadn't gone through this process. So I didn't know how to put that. I mean, I would like, honestly, to start off slowly, like maybe like, you know, go out to dinner, you know, I know. So I remember my niece would go with, with her dad, you know, I'd pick up at six o'clock and they would go out to dinner and be back. You know, I just, honestly, I don't know how the system works. So I don't know if we're able to put that, or, I mean, I know we already agreed to the, the overnight stay. So, I mean, he's 16. I don't know how that works. If you were to pick him up and my son were to have a panic attack or, you know, how would that work with the system and the legal oh, system? So Ms. Harris, I, I, I don't really want to cut you off, but we, we agree to one thing, but what I'm hearing from you is maybe you're not in agreement with that visitation now. Well, I'm just, like I said, when I put the visitation, I think he should meet him. I believe that that needs to happen. I believe it needs to happen. I just don't know at this point how he's going to react. He might be great with it. He might be fine with so, it. Um, my as Derek's just, mother, as Derek's mother, I think he needs to meet him. I think that's something that he needs to be able to to deal with and be able to experience. Okay, Miss Miss Harris, I yes. we have relayed to the court that there's an agreement on visitation. I'm hearing you say that maybe you're not in agreement to that right now. Is is that accurate? I'm, I guess so. I guess I'm trying to find out if Mr. Sanchez is okay to maybe start off with like one day instead of doing it the weekends, can we set it then if he can do pick up like at six and drop off, you know, at nine. So Ms. Harris, we, we, the, the time to negotiate um, isn't before the judge. So okay. we will we'll do one of two things. So let's keep moving on, on, on the support issues, the contested issues. And if we need to, the judge can refer us to the domestic relations office on the visitation issue. Okay. okay sounds good. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So let me ask you another question as far as the child support goes. Um, you're asking that we set child support based on Mr. Sanchez working um, 
50 hours a week, so 10 hours of overtime every single week for the entire year. Is that right? That's correct. And you think uh, that would be a fair calculation yes, of the first court? Yes, ma'am. I do. You understand that Mr. Sanchez has indicated he only works overtime about three months out of the year. That's what he stated right now. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any reason to believe that that is not true? Again, I, I wouldn't be able to say no because I don't know his job. Okay. Pass witness. Mr. Sanchez, do you have any questions of Ms. Harris? Um, yes, ma'am, I sure do. I just wanted to know all these years after he, Derek never called me, never mentioned anything to me. Um, now, why do you want to trust for it? And I can't even, I was trying to reach out to him and he told me that you would just wouldn't let me see him. You would call the cops on me. Why couldn't you let me see him? May I respond? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, the last time I spoke to you, Mr. Sanchez, was when I was still pregnant. So I'm not sure what when you're stating that you reached out to me. Um, if you recall, the last time we spoke, I was still pregnant. So that was the last conversation we had. So Derek wasn't even born yet. And you have not made one attempt to reach out or I still live in the same home where you and I lived. Um, I still have the same house number that I had back then. Nothing has changed. Um, the only thing that had changed is the cell phone because I didn't have one at that time when we were together. But I have the same address and the same phone number um, that I did 17 years ago. And uh, you've never tried to make contact and I have not talked to you not once. This is the first conversation you and I are actually having in 17 years. Yes, I agree with you on that, but you told me to stay away because you would call the cops. You also mentioned to my mother to, or her, she could see him, but not me. Right, because I was told her that if you want to have a relationship, it would be with Derek and not with me. And that's, right, but she never I still know by that. That's not, the relationship is not with me. The relationship is going to be with Derek. Right, and you never let me see him. You never make contact, once again. You've never made contact. I did, ma'am. I did, Deborah. Mr. Sanchez, do you, have another, do you have another question, sir? Um, uh, no, ma'am. Actually, I don't. Okay. Ms. Bray. State calls Guadalupe Sanchez. Yep. Yes. Uh, and Mr. Sanchez, um, you heard me recite the agreement into the record which we, we may discuss further. But as of right now, um, is it your agreement that mom be appointed a sole managing conservator and you have visitations on the fourth weekend of every month? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and you agree that there'd not be a geographic restriction? Yes, ma'am, I should do. Okay. Now, as far as Derek's last name, are you requesting that his name be changed to Sanchez? Yes, ma'am, I am. And are you requesting that it replace Harris or be hyphenated with Harris? It can be hyphenated with Harris if he wants, but I would like it to be under my last name. Do you have other children under the age of 18? Yes, I do, ma'am. Do they share your last name? Yes, they do. And are you currently working? Yes, ma'am, I am. Where do you work? Uh, I work in a place called Tewa, T-E-W-A, and they do woodwork manufacturing. And is that out of New Mexico? Yes, ma'am. So you have to pay New Mexico income taxes? Yes, ma'am. Do you consider your job seasonal? Um, just the overtime part, ma'am, is kind of seasonal, but it's full time. So right now, are you working more than 40 hours a week? Yes, ma'am, I am. 
And how often do you work more than 40 hours a week? Okay. Um, it usually runs about three, three months out of the year is what it comes out to. And do you average about 10 extra hours of overtime during per week uh, for three months? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And the other nine months out of the year, are you working at least the 40 hours? Yes, ma'am, I am. Do you have any health insurance available through your employer or any other source? No, ma'am, I sure don't. When did you find out or when did you know that Derek had been born? <clears throat> um, I know he had been born, I guess, I would say a year later. Uh, when my mom had explained to me that he had seen Derek. Um, and did you know that you were the father of Derek? I, I was thinking, yes, yes, I was, but I wasn't sure, but yes. Did you ever, did you ever make any attempts to provide any support to Miss Harris for Derek? No, ma'am, I sure didn't. She had just told me to stay away. And when the judge makes a ruling today, I'll have to prepare an order. Are you okay if I submit that order directly to the judge for her signature without you first having to review and sign off on it? Yes, I am. Is there anything else you want to make sure that the judge is aware of today? Um, no, ma'am. Just uh, be sure that um, I do have two other kids that I'm trying to provide for. So if she could take into consideration that um, I'm doing the best I can to provide for those other two, and I would love to help Derek as well. Pass witness. Ms. Harris, did you have any questions of um, Mr. Sanchez? Um, no, ma'am, I do not. Okay. Mr. Sanchez, you may have already answered this and I may have missed it, but do you have health care insurance through your employment? No, ma'am, I don't. Okay. How, do you know if it's available um, from an outside source? No, it's not actually. No, no. Okay. Ms. Frag, anything else? Uh, nothing further, Judge. Okay. State. State's recommendations, please. All right, state's requesting um, that the court approve the agreement as to conservatorship and the geographic restriction um, that after rendition of order, we be excused to confer further on visitation. If no agreement is reached, then a referral to DRO and to make these orders temporary. If an agreement can be reached, um, make these orders final. The state's recommendation is that child support be based off of Mr. Sanchez working overtime three months out of the year, uh, which would make his child support obligation, giving him credit for the two other children, $253 per month beginning March 1st, 2022 and ordering him to reimburse cash medical to mom who would be providing health and dental uh, in the amount of $59.72, which is a pro rata share of his 9%, um, and a dental support obligation of $9.95, again, a pro rata share. Uh, both payments beginning March 1st, 2022. Your Honor, um, the state would defer to the court as far as what period of retroactive child support, if any, the court would like to order. Um, this is the first filing for establishment. The test results were received uh, in and filed with the court in January and taking into consideration both witnesses' testimony. And I can provide calculations um, for those whenever the court determines how, how many months of support, if any, should be ordered for retroactive child support. Uh, if a retro judgment is taken that a reasonable payment plan toward that judgment be ordered 
and that Mr. Sanchez be ordered to pay or enter into a payment plan to pay court costs, and that the court also make a determination on the child's last name as the court deems in the best interest of the child. Ms. Sprague, you indicated that the 253 was based upon three months of that included his overtime. Is that correct? It, that I did it over the course of a year, averaged it out, having 10 hours of overtime for three months out of a year. Okay. And, and that's why I wanted clarification. So it wasn't just three months with the overtime, just that amount. It was the other months were not included. It w- I did a 12 month period. So I actually did one calculation for nine months, one calculation for three months, added them together and then okay, divided by an average. Okay, perfect. And you did give him credit for two other children. Yes. And what was the income tax, the state income tax credit? You may have said it. Income- um, I did not say it. Um, it was $69.67. Okay. And 48 months at minimum wage with no overtime would be what? Giving him credit, credit for the children. Yes. That's 173 per month. Okay. Which would total $8,304. Versus 16 years at the same rate. That's 192 months, which would be 33,216. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Harris, do you have anything else you would like to address the court at this time? You've heard some of the recommendations provided by the Attorney General's office. It's your turn to give me any last remarks. I mean, I do understand that he has um, his other children. Um, I don't know why I was thinking one of them did not have his last name, but he's saying they both do. Um, Because at the time that we were together, he told me that that other child that's Derek's age was not his, that um, his wife was with somebody else, his um, ex-wife now. Um, So that was my only confusion right now when he did tell me that he had the two kids. But I do take that into account and I understand what it's like to support for, for your other kids. Um, because again, I have been a single ch- uh, parent of, of the two of my kids as well. I have another one. Um, but I do also take into account that my son does have health issues that I provide for as well. And so me as a mother, that's my first concern. And I'm just hoping that the court does take into account that as well, that I have been providing for Derek for 16 years on my own. Um, And so I'm just, that is my, my biggest concern is just um, Derek's well-being. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Thank you. Mr. Sanchez, I'll ask the same of you. You've heard some of the recommendations that were presented to the court. Now it's my turn to hear from you. Any last remarks or any recommendations of your own? Uh. Yes, sir. Um, I'm just. I just um, want to say that uh, after all these years, 16 years, she never reached out or called, or I had you know, have a chance to see him or, or talk to him because she told me to stay away. Now she wants something. You know, it's, I don't think it's fair. I just want him to have my last name and I'd love to visit with him. Um, just I wish he would have done this. Let me pay child support earlier. We didn't have to go through this, but it, it is what it is now. And I feel like all these years have passed, and now I'm, you know, now she wants all this back. I feel like it's time. I've been, I paid all this time my other child supports, and I've never had issues. This is the first time that I'm going to this, and I, I feel like I shouldn't have to go that far back because I was not allowed to see him or, or and so now I'm ready to pay as as I go, but not that far back. Anything else? 
No, that's it, ma'am. Okay. Last word from the state. Um, Judge, it, it, the state is not requesting any retroactive medical support, but I, and I know Ms. Harris um, didn't say it when you asked her, but I don't know if that's something that the court wants to entertain. Or if Ms. Harris is even requesting it anymore. Um, I, I did, when I spoke to Ms. Lara, um, I had asked her if, if that would be um, part of the, the retro pay was the um, child support and some of the medical. Um, so I don't know if, if it can be also part of it um, to help me pay for the medical um, that I have paid for for Derek. Okay, then this, I think this is what I'm gonna do. Yes, so I'm going to go ahead and um, put in place some temporary orders. Iris, call DRO, please. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to follow or confirm the partial agreement with regards to conservatorship and the geographic restriction. With regards to visitation, I am going to order that both of you participate with the domestic relations office. Um, what that will mean is that you will talk to a social worker right now once we conclude the hearing. Keep in mind, this is temporary. We will come back in three months. And let me go ahead and get you that date right now. What this serves is for Mr. Sanchez to have an opportunity to connect with his son and to start establishing a relationship and for it to maybe start um, relatively small, you know, maybe some small access and possession, or might be some telephone calls, it might be some FaceTime, you know, we're going to, you're going to work with the social worker with regards to that. And then eventually make it such that there's more time that Mr. Sanchez can spend with his son, so that there is a sense of um, regularity and some um, consistency with visitation. And it's gonna mean both of you need to work on communicating with each other. It also means that um, both of you are gonna to have to co-parent, okay? He's 16 and you still have several years, many, many years before he graduates high school um, or turns 18. And even then, parenting doesn't really ever end anyway. That's a forever right. deal. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> Um, but let's, I don't want to just close the case today. I want to see how this is progressing and it's going to take work for both of you. Um, I think here's Miss Debbie and I want to see how it's progressing. It's not going to be perfect and you need to kind of understand that it's, nothing is going to be perfect, but talk to each other, um, communicate with each other and your son should be the most important thing with regards to this case and what is in his best interest. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, the return date for this case, just for us to maybe finalize it. And if we still have to babysit it, I don't have a problem with that. Well, we're, we're gonna set it for May 10th at 8.30 in the morning. Hi, Miss Debbie. Good morning, Judge, or good afternoon. Oh yes, this was one of our 8.30 That's hearings. Fair. Okay, so um, the parties are gonna be referred to you. It's gonna be monitored. 16-year-old um, son, first time really getting to know his dad. So let's kind of make it gradual. Um, you know, kind of like when you start um, visiting with foster parents or adoptive parents, how you kind of gradually um, include time. Um, and I told them to kind of think outside the box and let's see how that will progress. The return date will be the 10th of May at 8.30. With regards to the last name, retroactive child support. I'm going to reserve that for the final hearing. Um, Judge, I'm so sorry to bother you. Um, I know it's May 10th, but I am a teacher and I'm a testing teacher and the state of okay. Texas will be doing a, a, the math star test on the 10th. Okay. Is there any way we can do, I, I just, I have testing on the 10th and the 11th for star test. Okay. Will Thursday work for you then? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Okay, Thursday, then we'll go ahead and make it for Thursday the 12th at 8.30? You, ma yes, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Okay, no, thank you for letting me know. So, retro, last name, that's going to be reserved for the final. 
I am going to set current child support in the amount of $253. And I will follow the recommendations for Ms. Harris to maintain health care insurance and dental, um, but at the cost, I'm trying to see here, it was $59.72 and $9.95 respectively. Um, Mr. Sanchez, at the next court date, I know your income fluctuates. I really want to see a W-2 form and some current pay stubs so that we make sure that we're not, um, that make sure we're setting the child support accurately and making sure that we give you the proper credit where it's owed. So with the remaining issues of retroactive child support, Ms. Sprague is right, that do, does include the uh, medical retroactive if you wish to um, ask the court for that. You need to bring in your documentation and you need to bring any evidence that you might have for me to consider that. So I'll reserve that for the final hearing. Same Ms. thing for the last name, Derek. Okay, was there anything else, Ms. Sprague? Um, is court cost being reserved for final as well, Judge? Yes, I'll reserve court cost for final. Yes, ma'am, thank you. So the entry for this order will be this Friday at noon. It's a temporary order. Um, when you speak to Ms. Debbie, both of you are also going to have to take some co-parenting classes as well as um, an orientation class. If you feel that um, you really haven't had that opportunity to communicate, it's been 16 years since you really spoke to each other, that's between you and Mr. Sanchez. If you want to utilize um, a co-parenting app, Ms. Debbie will help you with that. Um, that way there is a document um, there's some documentation of both of you communicating with each other. Okay. So let's just, Debbie, think about what might work for this family and how they can co-parent together. Okay. Okay. All righty. Unless there's anything else, don't leave because you're going to meet with Miss Debbie right now. And that will conclude the hearing. Once you reach an agreement, um, Miss Debbie will draft up an order. That's a temporary order and I will sign it. And that will be in full force and effect as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good day. Break in, yes. Anything else from anybody? Uh, no, no, Judge. And the parties had agreed that I submit our yes. order directly to you as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. So go ahead and submit that order. I'll sign it, and then hopefully Miss Debbie will have um, a similar order regarding access and visitation. So, Mr. Sanchez and Miss Harris, if you can go back into the breakout room, and then Miss Debbie will meet with you individually. Okay. okay? Thank, you. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Thank Bray. you. Thank you, Judge. Yes, ma'am.